You know, it's a pleasure being here tonight, and for the last 22 months, I've had the privilege of being the mayor of the city of Greensboro. And to be an effective mayor, you have to have vision, you have to have energy, and you have to be able to bring people together and cause positive things to happen for all of our citizens in the community. And I think we've done that. Remember when we started some two years ago, we were a community that was fractured by a landfill debate that never should have occurred. We were east and west, and we didn't have any positive energy to move us forward. We didn't have a city manager, we didn't have a city attorney, the only two employees that the city council had. So we had to get organized. We did that. We hired a wonderful city manager, an excellent city attorney. They've got the strongest senior staff that we've had in my 20 years of service to the city of Greensboro. We also developed a strategy. We said we're going to focus on jobs and economic development. We said we're going to focus on public safety. And we said we're going to focus on making sure our infrastructure is first class. And in all of those areas, we've succeeded. We've, we've done some large transformational projects, or we've started some transformational projects in this, in this two years. Things that are going to make a difference in this community for the next hundred. And to be able to carry those forward, you need to have the persistence, the energy, and again, the ability to convene groups of people in this changing time of ours to make a positive difference for all of our citizens. Thank you. I want to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about me so you'll know how I shape my vision for this city. I'm known a lot as a community volunteer, but I have a strong business background. For 18 years, I was operations manager for a company called Tally Machinery, a Greensboro-based company started here in 1902. I was responsible for the day-to-day -day operations, whether it was personnel, profit and loss, I knew how to budget, I handled 25 nationally based salesmen. We did industrial laundry equipment, not stuff like the Maytag man does where it's 16 pounds. Our washers did 1,200 pound loads. Um, one of our machines was so scary looking that Stephen King wrote a short story about it. Um, and then they made an equally bad movie about it. Um, I learned from my, my tenure as a small business person what it is like to face things. We had, we had a fire back in the mid-90s, and we needed to make some very difficult decisions in order to save that company for a few people. We came, our, our leadership came down from New Jersey, and we made the tough choices to keep that company going. As the economy had a downturn, we realized that once again we were going to have to reinvent ourselves. I know what it's like to go back to the drawing board when need be to make difficult decisions. I know what it's like to navigate through the city when you've got issues as a small business person. So I know what, what small business people feel, and I think I will be a very good advocate for those people. Thank you. Thank you both candidates for your introductory remarks. Uh, the first question from the audience asked the candidates to address a question about food hardship in the city of Greensboro. And this uh, question will go to Mr. Perkins first. The question reads, the Food Research and Action Center, a national nonprofit, recently rated cities in terms of food hardship. Greensboro was rated fourth in the nation. What would the city council do under your leadership to reduce how many people in Greensboro lack sufficient food? Well, you know, when you're in a city where, when you map out where the food stores are, the majority of the food stores are on one side of town and the folks on the other side of town have to drive there, then it's incumbent on us to find a solution. We studied East Greensboro and what we found was the transportation linkages running north and south in the city were not adequate. There weren't enough crossroads and there wasn't a way to get from north to south. And we're in the process of working on transportation solutions to solve that. It doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen with the plan. And in order for us to make Greensboro one city, we've got to change the way it operates. We've got to have services all around our city. And I think that the belt loop, putting it in on the east side of town, going from Wendover up to 29, is going to cure a large portion of that situation. Thank you. Ms. Vaughn? I think it's shame in a state like ours that we have food deserts. And what we need to do is we need to have the grocery stores where the people live. 
For the last year, I've been working with a group who is interested in putting a co-op on Bessemer um, Avenue in the um, um, Phillips Avenue in the new Renaissance Center. It is a very unique idea where you have a neighborhood who has come together to solve their own problem. They didn't wait for the city to come in. They said, we've got this issue, we've had this issue for 14 years, and I've been trying to help them make that become a reality. Not only that, we partnered with A&T, with a &T, and we have a community garden that's gonna be on Phillips Avenue where we're supplying them with water and um, A&T is coming in and using it as a learning experience and we'll be able to sell fresh fruits and vegetables to that neighborhood. These are just two model projects that we can do throughout the city. Thank you. The next question is the first question from the media panel, and it will be from Amanda Lambert. Uh, thank you. Um, how does your economic development strategy differ from your opponent? Me? Uh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's your turn to answer first. Well, recently there was a study that was unveiled for, the, for East Greensboro, and I think it's very important that we focus on East Greensboro for a number of reasons. One, the last census showed that as the city, um, we are 11th in per capita income in the state, and that just isn't acceptable. And East Greensboro has about half the income that West Greensboro has. East Greensboro has cheap land, and we've got infrastructure out there. Um, Evans Engineering just un unveiled a study earlier this week showing how we can repurpose some area, how we can grow to the west. And I think that's something that we really have to look at. The land in the west is very expensive. We're very over overbuilt. But the east has got a, a workforce that's ready and willing. Um, their, their unemployment rate is about double what you find in the west. We've got a very willing workforce. So I think we really need to focus on the areas where we can do the most good. I think we need to focus on the areas that we've identified the last two years and have been working on. Jobs and economic development is the number one priority of the city of Greensboro. We've identified three areas that have the best chance of success in bringing jobs in a very competitive global economy. Number one, the airport area. Number two, our center city. And number three, the area around the nanotechnology center on Lee Street. All three of those areas have been part of, of hard work by our city council team to make real progress. Uh, for instance, uh, we went to Washington, D.C. and got a million and a half dollars for a taxiway. And on Thursday, we'll open Honda Jets uh, maintenance, overhaul, and repair facility, employing 417 of our residents. In our downtown, we got to make this a cool place for folks to go. So when Matt Brown suggested that we had to have a new performing arts center, or we would bulldoze our 57-year-old one, we decided to put it downtown as a community so that we could create the type of buzz that would attract businesses to this area. And in, at, at the uh, Nanotech Center, the City Council put together a deal to basically give the land for $1 a year to the Hayes-Taylor Y. And on November 4th, there will be uh, construction equipment out on that site building an $11 million facility. So we acted on our plan we achieved results, and we'll do the same thing in the next two years. Thank you.